Right. So, um, all right, so our objective today, so the next building block towards putting everything together. So remember, we're going to put everything together at the end. So we've got, right now, we've got vertical asymptotes. We've got holes. Those are both types of discontinuity. We've got horizontal asymptotes. Um, we're not interrupting your text, you know, anything. Can you go ahead and take those out of your ears for me, please? Thank you. Um, so you're going to uh, asymptotes. We're going to have intercepts. The thing we're doing today is going to be right in the equation of slant asymptotes. So everyone that was here and those that are watching the video, we talked about yesterday about overall behavior. Okay, so um, I'm going to do right right now, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to give you any math function, but I'm going to give you a picture of what's, what we would be looking like. So, all right, so I might have a function that looks something like this. This is a very common type looking one, right? So I might have a function that looks like this. And looks like this. All right. And we are like we were talking about yesterday. We're like micro. We're right up in its face and we're seeing all the details. When we zoom out, we'll be we'll be actually looking at the overall behavior, which will look like that green line. So we saw it. We did it many times yesterday. So when we are looking at the function. When we zoom out, this function, let me do it down here on the bottom. I'll just do a, a little, I'll do it in purple so you can see the difference. So this down here, this black function, all of that black stuff, all of these lines, remember we went from negative 10 to 10 on our window. Boom, we see everything. Then we went from negative 1,000 to 1,000, right? And then what it will look like is this. All right, so it'll look like a slanted line. It's a slant asymptote, so it's an ob oblique. Some of you might call it an oblique, neither horizontal nor vertical. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, it'll look like that. Now, this is no different than yesterday with the overall behavior. Remember we did that parabolic one when we zoomed out? In this course, we won't do the parabolic, but we will do the lines. And you're actually going to have to write the equations of those lines. Okay, so let's get that. So it's the same as yesterday in that it's overall behavior. It's um, different than yesterday because we told you yesterday, and I gave, I alluded to it in the lesson on the key. We told you when when you had a bigger power in the top, than you did down the bottom, we said there was no horizontal asymptote. When we said it was top heavy, right? And I kind of alluded to it and I did one on the key. Uh, we said top heavy is no horizontal asymptote. And that's when we did the x to the fourth over the x squared and we saw parabolic. What you will see right now is the overall behavior is you always look at the, yesterday people, we always look at the biggest terms, the biggest powered terms, largest degree, and then we compare them. When it is heavy by one, then you're going to have a slant asymptote. Beyond this course, when we have a heavy by two, parabolic, heavy by three, cubic asymptote, you know. But for this course, what you'll be tested on is the slant asymptote. So, all right, let's get this and we'll start actually doing the nitty gritty. So the objective is to write the equation of the slant asymptotes. That is the picture of a slant asymptote. It's the overall behavior. What is a slant? How, how can you tell a slant asymptote? It will be top heavy by a degree of one. One higher. 17th over 16th. 12th over 11th. Anything by power one. So when you divide it, all you're left, when I divide x to the fourth by x cubed, guess what? I'm left with an x. When I divide x to the 17th by x to the 16th, 
guess what? I'm left with a power of one X. So, so its behavior will be aligned. So let's clear our minds and let's start on. So let's go ahead and analyze the function y equals 3x squared minus 1 over x minus 2. So um, analyze it. So what it'll come in, and it'll, it'll, by the time we get to the end, it'll be identify all the asymptotes. Well, you'll do verticals. We always know that's going to be 2 um because two minus two causes division by zero and then we'll say oh it's top heavy so it's got no horizontal asymptote but it's top heavy by one so it does have a slant asymptote and to find that slant asymptote you have to understand that this really is a fraction and that fraction is really a division problem so what you're going to have to do is divide to get it so I'm going to give you two types of division, right? And a lot of you have probably already seen it, but I'm going to refresh you. So let's pretend, um, let's pretend I divide the number 22 by 7. See the pi days coming up, right? 22 divided by 7. 22, is, the answer to that is a quotient of 3 plus a remainder of 1 7. Right, so this is my quotient, and this is my remainder. Same thing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Same math you learned in the the younger grades. Okay, phones will be all gone, or yeah, especially since you were out yesterday. So you're going to need this. So this is not hard, but you need to pay attention. So I would advise you write something down. All right, so here we go. So I am dividing three x squared minus one by x minus 2. So we're going to use a procedure called synthetic division. I'm going to I'm going to refresh long division here in a minute. So we're doing synthetic. If you choose not to use it, you can do everything with long. But I advise you get handy with it cuz it's it's helpful. It's the easiest one. And you can only use this. Here's a caveat, you can only use it when your denominator is linear. Okay, for now, for this unit. Well, when you get better, we'll talk about something else. But So, synthetic division, when the denominator is linear. So, is my denominator linear? Yes, it is. X minus 2. So, synthetic division will work. So, what you do is you write... The coefficients, and I'm going to show, I'm going to lay this out, and so you know what I'm talking about. You write the coefficients and the root of denominator. Okay, no way is that a textbook um, explanation, but since I'm here talking to you, you'll see what I'm talking about. So write the coefficients and the root of the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Three, zero, negative one. 2. So, let's see if this all makes sense to what I wrote. So, we're going to write the coefficients and the root of the denominator. So, 3. 3. That makes sense. Negative 1, negative 1. That makes sense. Now, I wonder where this 0 came from. No x. It's a placeholder. It's going to be a placeholder. All right? So, there's no x. So, it's 3x squared, 0 groups of x and a negative one constant. Then, where you probably saw this um, formula, this, this synthetic division before, might have been in the rational root theorem, things like that. It's how we used to evaluate uh, uh, rational functions without a calculator. I don't know where you learn it, but what we have to do is this is your x value of the root of this. So, basically, for now, we can go over the history, and in small group, I can show you what I'm talking about. For the purpose of laying out synthetic division, it's always going to be opposite of this, because it's going to be the root of your linear. So, help me out. If this were x plus 7, what would be down here? Negative 7, right? And then so on and so forth, right? Just keep going on. Um, because I've got 
three groups of x squared. So I've got three groups of x squared. I've got no groups of x. So I need to, I need to count down one degree all the way down. So if I had a 15th power, I'd have to count every one. And any one, I'd, 15th, 14th, 13th, I'd have to have a zero for anything I didn't have. Okay. So now, and you'll see why it keeps it, it keeps everything nice in order. So let's, so that's my, my, my step. So I'm going to write my coefficients, my roots, my denominator. Now, step two. All right, how am I going to do this? Um, let's do, I tried writing out something earlier on my sheet, but step two. So one is there. This is two. It's going to be bring down. So the whatever number is in the front, you bring it down. Whoops. Oh my goodness. Whatever, I'm leaving it green. All right, so you just bring it flat down, straight down. Your third step is multiply. So what am I talking about? I'm going to do this. This is step three. Multiply. So I'm going to then bring that up here. On my, okay, hang on, I'll, I'll say this. Two, this is, this is step three. It just, it's coincidental that the number happens to be three. So step three is multiply. So two times three is six. So I'm going to think about it up here. On my key, you won't see me write that. I don't write that. And most textbooks don't either. But, but we're, we're going to think about it. So two times three is six. Step four is add. So six plus zero is six. So we'll write that down there. Then, it's like your favorite shampoo, wash, rinse, repeat. So now we do the same thing again. We multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. Boom. I'm at the end. There's nothing else. All right, so I must be done. That's why the placeholder helps. I'm at the end. I'm done. So let me refresh your memory again since Pi Day is tomorrow. Uh, 20, 22 divided by 7 is equal to 3 plus 1 seventh. All right, so your quotient plus your remainder. So my quotient is, let's look at the original problem, 3x squared times x minus 2. So my, my, uh, my, um, my quotient is going to be 3x minus 6. 3x plus 6, I lied, 3x plus 6, plus a remainder of 11 over my divisor, x minus 2. All right, so we're going to spend a little bit more on this to look one more time. So look at my, my quotient was my 3, that compares with my 3x plus 6. My remainder is how many parts I have left over my divisor. Look, my divisor is 7, my parts left. Three sevens of 21. I got one part left out of seven. And that's what this is. I've got 11 parts left out of x minus two. So what you will notice is that I started off with an x squared and uh, my quotient is x. It's always going to be one power lower. Because if I divide a 15th power by a 14th power, guess what? My quotient is x to the power of 1. So it will always be one power less um, than what you started with. Okay? And x to the... Uh, uh, I meant to say, actually, that was confusing. If I divide an x to the 15th by an x, I will end up with an x to the 14th, is what I meant to say. Right? So I'm going to always be one power less. So let's refresh. So divided, division... I got my quotient and my remainder. 3x plus 6. One power less than x. Now, the people who were gone yesterday are going to have a hard time right here. So let's look. Remember, we're looking at overall behavior. So we're 
we're looking, this is my X scale. Here's zero, and here's approaching infinity. Obviously, we can never get to infinity. But I've got my remainder is 11 cookies divided by almost infinity friends. Right? If I've got 11 cookies and I divide them amongst the populations of China, India, and the United States added together, how many cookies is each person going to get? About nothing. Right? So this function, this function uh, is 3x plus 6 plus nothing. All right? So your function is your slant asymptote, the overall behavior, is y equals 3x plus 6. And that's what it will be. Now I'm going to do one more and then I'll let you go. All right, um, let's do let's make this one up. Let's do. Um, synthetic division will not work if you do not have a linear denominator. So let's do, let's make something up. Um, uh, let's do um, 3x cubed plus 2x minus 1 over um let's do um x what's that you want to do two x squared no let's just do x squared x squared minus x plus two All right it is look at the look at what is similar is the top is greater by a degree of one Right, that makes no sense right there, but the mathematical sense. But you and I can see that the top degree, the polynomial on the top is degree heavy by one. All right, so that means there's a slant asymptote. Now, how do we find it if the denominator is not, if I can't use synthetic division, how, what am I supposed to do? Well, you have to use good old fashioned long division. So let's do that. Now, there's a little, there's similarities and differences. So, we're going to write everything out, 3x cubed plus 0x squared, because I don't have any, plus 2x minus a 1. And I'm going to divide that by x squared minus x plus 2. So I guess if we were going to keep track of steps here, I would say something like, um, I would say divide first by whoops what was that divide first by the first okay what the heck do i mean by that right this is a first and this is a first the first term in the in the dividend and the first term in the divisor can you see okay so divide the first by the first so i'm going to divide 3x cubed by x squared. That leaves me 3x. So I'm going to, the way the way I would teach this is I always place my quotient above the degree it is. So if my quotient happened to be x squared, I would have put it in that column. You know, uh, it helps me think it, to know when I'm done. And it might help you and, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mark points off if you don't do it my way. But I think it helps, right? So then, second step is remultiply. Okay, so we've got to go and check. So this is kind of like long division by hand with numbers. So three x times x squared is three x cubed. Three x times negative x, negative three x squared, and three x times plus two is plus six x. Step three, which is different, so this is a difference, subtract. 
we uh, added last time. So, 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, right? I'm going to subtract the whole thing. 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, well, that's gone. That's zero. Help me out. I don't have my calculator. 0x squared minus a negative 3x squared. What is it? 3x squared. 0 minus a negative. 0 minus a negative 3x squared. All right, so it's a common mistake. So be careful. It will mess you up on the entire thing, right? So 0 minus a negative 3x squared. So that gives you um, a positive 3x squared. Uh, 2x minus 6x. That's negative 4x. And then good old-fashioned uh, good old fashioned long division. Make sure you've got enough terms to bring down. So you got your three terms there. Then just like your favorite shampoo, repeat. Okay. Then divide my first by my first. So my first by my first. So if I divide 3x squared by x squared, that is the number 3. And that's a constant. So I'm going to put it above my constants. And then I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to multiply. So now I've got 3x times 3x squared, which is 3x squared. 3 times a negative x, which is negative 3x. 3 times 2, which is plus 6. Repeating, so I'm subtracting now. Zero minus negative three x. Okay. Plus, it was on a tape delay. That was like a. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So, um. 3x squared, so we're subtracting 3x squared. Help me out here. Negative 4 minus negative 3. Negative 1. Be confident. Negative 1x. So I just do negative 4 plus 3, you know, because minus minus, negative 4 plus 3. Um, and then negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. Okay, quick pop quiz. What is this? An apple, a trig function, or a remainder? <laughs> it's green. I did do it in green. You're right. Okay, that is your remainder. Very good, right? So you have, you now have uh, 3x plus 3 plus, or no, because this is a minus, you have minus uh x minus 7 over actually i should probably do no actually i should probably write it as plus negative x minus 7 over uh x squared minus x plus 2. okay one more time let's really get this out for the people absent yesterday this number is this many cookies negative x minus 7 cookies Divided by the entire population of the world, right? How many cookies does each friend get? Practically nothing. So we we now write the equation of the overall behavior. The correct answer is not 3x plus 3. The correct answer is the slant asymptote is y equals 3x plus 3. There's nothing on that line, it, but, it, it, but its overall behavior is what it is approaching, asymptote, what it approaches. So that's what it tries to be like, it's its behavior. All right, that is it. Anything for the good of the video? All right, I'll hand you a sheet, and then um, anyone that's listening if you uh, uh, on the video, do the, I want two on the front and two on the back done first before you finish it because i want to make sure while you're here with me you do synthetic and long just get it you know just get or any cobwebs brushed off okay
Um, uh oh, I'm messing everything up here. Here we go.